in today's show. Looking ahead to a busy 14-game day on Friday, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball, and on Substack at JoshLloyd48.substack.com. That's free. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, let's have a look at the games. There's 14 games on. It's not a streaming day. We're going to talk about where opportunities have opened up through injuries and that as we go through all 14 of the games, but no specific streaming section at the end of the show. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves and Hornets. Is the first game we're going to look at. This is an early game, 5 p.m. I don't know why it's at 5 p.m., but it is at 5 p.m. So be aware of that. Be ready to set your lineups. I'll say it again, 5 p.m. Eastern, standard time start. Cody Martin is out for Charlotte. We don't have the update uh, for LaMelo Ball yet or Dennis Smith Jr., who once again has sprained his ankle. I would expect Smith is out. Ball, I think there is a chance that he returns, but I, we don't know that yet. If both of those blokes are out, as probably should be your expectation, then you're going to get increased value for Ubre, for Haywood, for McDaniels. You'll probably get um, Rogier starting with Ubre, Haywood, McDaniels. Oh, no, or, no, sorry, Ubre and Haywood, that's what it'll be, with Washington and the cockroach Mason Plumley. Maybe you get some more of those Kai Jones minutes we've been seeing. And then uh, last game, the Salt Fleek, Phil Maladon. He played 16 minutes, and he'll have to get some backup point guard minutes there behind Rogier. So there'd be 15 or so minutes maybe going his way. For the Wolves side of things, they did just have an update on their injury report. Jordan McLaughlin is actually out. The artist formerly known as Torian Prince is out. And Kyle Anderson is listed as questionable. So if Anderson and Prince are both out, they're going to have to play Naz Reed a lot more. Austin Rivers is going to get minutes. And maybe we get rotation minutes for Wendell Moore. I don't think so. But... They might have to. What this does also mean is we'll get more minutes for Jaden McDaniels, but more minutes for, more importantly, for D'Angelo Russell with Jordan McLaughlin out. I want to watch Carl Anthony Towns, who turned an absolute gem of a line last time out for Minnesota. He's sort of on the fringes between first and second round at the moment. Um, it was great to see those defensive stats come in for him. That's not something we normally uh, associate with Towns. The big blocks and big steals, well, at this point in his career anyway. Um, let's see if that sticks. Well, also Jaden McDaniels, who again, had struggled with consistency, but last game scored well and got blocks. We don't often see that combination from him. With the absences of Prince and McLaughlin and maybe maybe Kyle Anderson, is he able to get those big minutes and produce well again? We want to watch that. For the Hornets, Gordon Haywood was pretty poor last time out. I do think that he is a 12-team league player. Um, I'd like to see him be a little bit more consistent. Obviously, that top 50 upside that he had years ago is not there anymore. But let's see what he is able to do. And then Big Dick Nick. Big Dick Nick Richards. The Cockroach Mason Plumley. Richards has had two really good games in a row. Plumley's still getting the bulk of the minutes. But if we get a 21 minute a night, Richards, that is 12 team intriguing. It's 12 team curious. So you can look at him. I, I don't think he's going to overtake Plumley as much as we all think that he probably should. I don't think that he will. But you know, if you want to take a flyer on someone, there is some value maybe in that. Maybe. The Sixers. They are taking on the Orlando Magic. The Magic are one and a half point favorites. Yes, the Magic are one and a half point favorites because the Sixers are without Embiid, Maxi, Harden, and Thibel. The Magic are without Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, Lord Voldemort. Wendell Carter Jr. is questionable. Trimero KK is questionable. But what that means is that Paulo Bunkero is back. He's not on the injury report. He is back and he's ready to go. On the Sixers side of things, they have been starting Montrez Harrell because cool, why not? But 
Paul Reed's the guy, isn't he? He's the one who gets all those defensive stats, and we're probably looking at at least 20 minutes here for Reed. And yeah, he would be the option there, I think, over Harold that you'd want to stream him. But again, are you actually streaming on a 14 game day? I just want to watch the thick hogsman, Tobias Harris. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Um, look, well, this is his opportunity to do something. He hasn't. Hopefully, if he puts together a good game here, you can sell high on him because, as you're well aware, I'm not particularly high on Harris rest of season. But let's see if he actually does something. Well, for the Magic, Polo, he's back. Great. It's been two weeks. It's good to have him back in the lineup. How it all works, you know, who who moves to the bench there? If, if Carter and Polo are back, um, yeah, Polo, I'm sure, is still going to start next to Wagner. They're still going to go big with with that lineup. Um, yeah, what, is it, what does it mean? What does it mean for everybody now that Gary Harris is back in action as well? Where does... Who loses? Obviously, Mo Bamba, and if, Bamba, if Bunkera and Carter both play, Bamba's going to lose out quite a bit, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. But if Carter's out, Bamba will get another start. Now, he's only really worth having. Well, he's only worth having while those two guys were out. But if Carter does remain sidelined, then Bamba is at least a stream guy here. But yeah, I, I honestly I just don't believe in him. But we'll see what his value looks like in this game. Blazers, Knicks. Lillard's out, Peyton's out, Keon Johnson's out. Well, for the Knicks, Cam Reddish is questionable, Mitchell Robinson is questionable, and Derek Rose is questionable. So interesting that Robinson came back, played the back-to-back, -back, left one of those games that's now questionable again with that knee problem. Hmm. Thanks. Um, for the Blazers, Yusuf Nurkic, it's getting better for him. The production is going up. The minutes are going up. He's producing well. Uh, the other one, sorry, is Drew Eubanks is questionable too because he'd been playing some pretty good numbers, there, pretty good minutes behind Nurkic. Let's watch what Nurkic is able to do. Let's also watch Justice Winslow, who did start last game in place of Lillard. Now, we know he's going to have rough percentages and low usage, but the rebounds, assists, and steals and blocks, if you are desperate for those, he can be at least an option, but I'm not convinced he's playing 33. Him and Sharp will sort of go back and forth. We also got Nasir Little in that mix last game, getting 22 minutes or so, making them pretty rough as your know, must-stream players. Or they're not They're not those sort of players. They're not must-streams is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, maybe there's a little bit of value you can get there from uh, from Justice. On the Knicks side, Quentin Grimes. If Reddish does play, does Grimes start? Because Grimes started, got hurt. Reddish took over. Reddish started, got hurt. Grimes took over. If they're both healthy. What do they do? Because remember, Grimes was literally out of the rotation before Reddish got hurt. So how do they run those minutes? Who gets the minutes? How does it work? Is Grimes worth it? No. Is Reddish worth it? No. But let's see how they distribute the minutes. Well, Rowan Barrett's been dreadful, but last game he was better. And better than dreadful is an improvement. He actually was pretty good last game. And as I've always said with him, you know you're going to cop the hits in percentages. But if that scoring is valuable to you, it's valuable to you. Everything else is trash. And that's why rankings are, are so important to be able to interpret correctly. Because he's 250th or whatever he is this season. But for certain teams, that makes sense to have him. In points leagues, he is a must-roster player, irrespective of um, categories, because you know, that doesn't really matter in a points league. You're not looking at categories, as you're well aware, I am sure. Today's episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. You all know ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Maybe you've run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. I guess all 400,000 of their shows, too many for you. Or you know, well, not too many because you got through them. So there you go. So if you wanted to, to watch, say, Friends, it's on UK Netflix. So you can go on to ExpressVPN, change your location to the UK, refresh Netflix, and there you go. You can access Friends. ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. And it's not just Netflix. You can do it with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason that you should use ExpressVPN is to watch shows, or, or why you should use it to watch shows is because it's ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD, no problems. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash locked on right now, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash locked on, expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. Make sure you're also checking out Locked On Sports today. It's our show that covers everything in sports right across the sports landscape. So check out Locked On Sports today. Nets paces. The Nets are three-point favorites in this game on the road. Um, Yuta Watanabe is out. TJ Warren is out. Chris Duarte is out. 
For Indiana, we are expecting... Well, not we're expecting. We don't know about Andrew Nembhard or about Isaiah Jackson. Nembhard's missed the last two. Jackson missed the last one. With Nembhard out, you're getting Neesmith, getting that big boost in minutes and shit production. But we don't know exactly who's going to get that starting job if Nembhard is healthy. I think Nembhard is probably a better player than Neesmith already, but we don't know that. And with Smith... Oh, not with Smith. With Jackson out, Goga Badadze is the guy for deeper leagues that you want to look at. For the Nets, I want to watch Kyrie Irving because... His last few games, I think they're ramping him back up after missing time, but the minutes haven't been great. 26, 31, 28. The other guys, is playing probably four or five minutes fewer than Durant and Simmons. He was playing so many before he got suspended. I think it'll push back up pretty quickly, but let's see. Also want to watch Royce O'Neal, Basmati man. I don't know why they are running the offense like he is, prime John Stockton. I don't know why he's getting all these assists. Well, I know why he's getting them because he's passing it to people who are shooting. His decision-making has been better. Is this a real thing? Is the offense running through Royce O'Neal? Sort of, it sort of is. And I'm inclined to believe that it is getting to be close to real. For the Pacers, I want to watch Humpty Dumpty, Benedict Matherin. He's on the fringes of being dropped in 12 team leagues. He scores well, but nothing else. I believe in him long-term as a player because that sort of ability to get to the line as a rookie is so, so rare. right? But what he's doing now in terms of the lack of supporting stats, the lower minutes, not even 30 minutes a night, it, it really does hamper his fantasy numbers. Let's see if he can push into bigger minutes. And then I want to watch Sticks. Stay by your man. I mean, I, I don't want to because he's really bad, but I do want to watch him just to see, like, is there anything to salvage? I think he should be jacked off. Get that garbage out! And yeah, that's disappointing considering the the value I thought he could have fantasy-wise at the start of the year. But I also thought the paces would be bad. So therefore, he'd get a chance to put up numbers. But they're not bad. And therefore, he is bad. So he doesn't get to play that much. Let's see what let's see what happens with that. Pelicans, Grizzlies. Grizzlies are one-point favorites here. Bain is out. Zoe Williams is out. CJ McCollum missed last game with an illness. You'd have to think he's probably going to be okay. Trey Murphy is the other one that's more interesting. He's missed the last two with that foot issue. With him out, you get more minutes for Najee Marshall. You get more minutes for Devontae Graham. You get more minutes for Dyson Daniels, the dustbuster, in there as well. And if CJ misses, Jose Alvarado becomes the stream option. Last game wasn't great for Larry Nance. He only played 17 minutes. He played 18 minutes the game before that. I think a lot of that's blowout related. They don't put him in. Because normally he plays like the final seven or eight minutes of the game to close it out. But he didn't need to. They won by 45 and 19 the last two games. So if this game is close, how Nance's minutes look in comparison to Balanchunas is going to be really key. I also want to watch Herbalife Jones, who's also seen his minutes down 20 and 19 the last two games. Again, blowout related. But he played 19 last game. Ingram played 32. That was getting more minutes to Graham. Getting more minutes to Daniels. To me, he's not necessarily a must roster category league guy. Definitely not must roster for 12, 10 points, Herb Jones. But he's more just a steel specialist. And those minutes are, are a little bit concerning from the bloke who's been starting. For the Grizzly side of things, I want to watch Steve Adams, but also mainly want to watch the Steve Adams Brandon Clark minutes split because that is really key to determining Adams' value, but also Brandon Clark's. Does Adams play 28, limiting Clark to 19 or 20, or does it get more to 24, 24? Also want to watch Lil John Concha. Okay. He's a 12-team league player while Bain is out. He provides rebounds. He hits some threes. He's got good efficiency. He gets some assists. There's some defensive stats in there. He's never going to be a high usage player, but while minutes are up, yeah, we, we really like what he can produce in that scenario. Lakers Spurs. Lakers are four-point favorites. Pat Beverly is out, suspended. The expectation is that LeBron James will return in this game. Um, that is not confirmed at this point, but that is the expectation. Um, on San Antonio, they did upgrade Zach Collins to probable, but then they ruled him out last game. So we've got him at questionable here. Josh Richardson is also questionable, while Blake Wesley remains out with that MCL issue. Will the Lakers start Dennis Schroeder in place of Pat Beverly? I think they probably will. The other option will be Kendrick Nunn. Yeah, they're both pretty bad options. Um, I don't think Schroeder is a 12-team league ad. I mean, you can take a crack at it. I just don't think he's all that good. Austin Reeves is the one I'm interested in. But what I want to see with Austin Reeves is can he maintain minutes and value when LeBron's back? Minutes, I would hope so. Value, I'm up in the air about. For the Spurs, horsecock Calden Johnson has been struggling. Whose horse is that? Like, honestly, terrible. Do not drop him. But we have to understand that he is not the level of player I don't think that we saw those first couple of weeks he'll be in that 80 to 100 mix I reckon rest of season 
but he'd want to turn it around. Like he was benched because of how bad he was. And then I'd like to see something more from Trey Jones. At this point, he's more of an assist specialist and the assists are really good and the steals are solid. But the offense, I uh, mean, the scoring and the shooting, it leaves a lot to be desired. They don't really have anyone who's going to replace him. So I think his role is relatively secure, but give me something. Give me some improvement, my guy. Cavs and Bucks. Really good game, this one. I can't wait for it. Bucks, two and a half point favorites. Middleton, we're expecting is out. Joe Ingles will be out. Rubio will be out. We don't know about Karis Levert or about Kevin Love. Um, Levert has missed the last couple with the ankle problem. Love played through the thumb and then couldn't play and he's out. I expect we're going to have him out um, for a while here, but I don't know that. For the Cavs, I want to watch Donovan Mitchell because, of course, he's good. He's done. He's good. But... With Garland back, the assists have started to fall. I don't believe that Mitchell, who is a top 10 player this season, will remain a top 10 player. He might not even remain top 20. That doesn't mean he's not good. That doesn't mean he's not useful. It just means that we're going to see a little bit of a reduction in some of what he's doing. I also want to watch Lamar Stevens, who's been starting for Levert. Yeah, can he produce anything that's not 16-team valuable? Probably not. And there's just a mix of guys. There's Okoro. There's Chetty Osman. Uh, there's Dean Wade, who's returned. And that's just going to jumble all that up. For the Bucks, I do want to watch Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis the efficiency for him is down. Like his two point percentage is down at like 57 when normally he's been 60 plus and that's impacting his overall value. The free throws are atrocious. We know that, right? They're worse than expected, but we knew they were going to be bad and impactfully bad. But I need that two point efficiency to jump up because that's what's really impacting his overall numbers at the moment. I also want to watch Brook Lopez who has, unbelievably, just maintained these top numbers. I don't know how he's doing it. His block rate is the best he's had in three years. His usage is up, his scoring, his percentages are up, his rebounds are good. He's been great. Does maybe Chris Middleton have an impact on his usage when he returns? Yeah, I think that is possible, but you know, there's no far from a guarantee that Middleton drops Lopez outside of the top 50. I think he probably will, but that's, again, very, very far from being a guaranteed scenario that he is... Um, that he's dropping down that far. But we will find out, of course, and this will give us another data point on his numbers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Sweatblock. Yes, Sweatblock. Jennifer, she used to wear multiple shirts. She used to fold toilet paper in her armpits to try and hide the embarrassing sweat. Wow. Not anymore, thanks to Sweatblock. Sweatblock is here, Jennifer, to make your life better. As I told her this separately on a text. I said, Jen, like multiple shirts, come on. It makes you look so like... It doesn't even look like you. Multiple shirts, you've got different collars coming through. You look like a, a, a 90s guy with spiked hair and three popped collars. It's too much, mate. It's 2022. You need to do better than that. And I know you're out here supporting Big Shirt and propping up their industry, but Sweatblock's here to cut them down. The Sweatblock Wives have been a bestseller on Amazon for the past 10 years with over 10,000 five-star reviews. So don't miss the opportunity to try Sweatblock. If you or someone you love is experiencing embarrassing sweat or odor, try Sweatblock. Save 20% with the promo code locked on at sweatblock.com. Also available at Amazon. Kings and Celtics is the next game. The Celtics are seven and a half point favorites and the total here is 232 points. Um, I want to watch Keegan Murray because it's been really bad for him. I know he's dealing with some stuff, but the production's way down. There's no rebounds. There's no defensive stats. The usage is down. The minutes are down. I think he's a drop. Maybe you add him later on, but it's not looking great. It's pointing absolutely in the wrong direction. Maybe he proves me wrong. I think I would rather have Malik Monk, and Monk had a really strong game. Now, he's not going to be as good as he was in that game, but I do think that Monk is worth a 12-team standard league roster spot. For the Celtics, Rob Williams remains out. Um, your Christmas is the return date, allegedly there. For um, Boston, though, they moved Derek White back into the starting lineup and moved moved Grant Williams to the bench. The expectation is that White will stay there for the next four or five games, meaning I'm not really sure if Williams, Grant Williams is going to move back and forward and his production's limited and his minutes are going to be a bit dropped and he's not the greatest fantasy producer anyway. I'm not sure that he's a hold in 12-team leagues. I don't think Derek White's an ad necessarily. You could try it, but I'm not sure that he is. Then I also want to watch Al Horford because... Mainly, I want to mention Al Horford here because a lot of people have said, well, now that Rob Williams is coming back, do we sell high on Al Horford? And I'm not really sure that much changes for Horford when Williams is back, to be honest. Horford's around, what, 90th or 100th? I think that's sort of where he'll end up when Rob Williams is back. I don't actually think much changes for him. I think they can easily coexist. We saw them do it last season. So I don't think that Horford... Well, if someone wants to give you a top 50 guy for Horford, you do it. They're never going to do it. 
But if someone decides, man, I really love Al Horford, let me give you a top 50 player, you do that. But I don't think much changes for him otherwise. But let's see if he's able to build on some solid performances. Wizards and Heat. Miami are three and a half point favorites here. There's a lot of players out for Miami again. You know, they've got 10 blokes on their injury report. Um, just got official update from the Lakers on LeBron James, by the way, as I'm recording this. LeBron is officially questionable. They thought he'd be able to return, but he is listed officially as questionable. All right, as I'm saying this, it's a bunch of injury reports just dropped now. LaMelo Ball is out. Dennis Smith is out. Kevin Love is out. Um, Karis LeVert is out. CJ McCollum is out. So Jose Alvarado gets a boost there. Just a bunch of stuff just coming through. Gordon Haywood is back on the injury report with question, questionable. Uh-oh. Um, I think that's all of the ones. Oh, Josh Richardson's doubtful um, on the Spurs. After we, we talked, so we're going to talk about them. No, we just talked about them. So a bunch of um, Doug McDermott's questionable as well. Isaiah Jackson is questionable. A bunch of injury report news just came in, but the big ones there are Levert out, Love out, um, Ball out, Dennis Smith out. So Maladon for deeper leagues there in Charlotte. Obviously, Rogier and McDaniels and Oubre, they, those guys all get boosts. Um, Trey Murphy's questionable, but CJ McCollum out in New Orleans. So that just all dropped now. Miami, bunch of guys out for them. Um, Jim Butler is out. Maxi Struess is doubtful, the Winter Soldier. Duncan Robinson is doubtful. Just a ton of players who are, who are out and have been out for a while, which is frustrating, obviously. Hero is questionable. Gabe Vincent is questionable. Deadman is questionable. Bam Adebayo is probable. On the Wizards, Beal, Hachimura, and Monte Morris are all questionable. Just a lot happening in this game. For the Wizards, Denny Avdia had a triple-double last game, played 40 minutes. So if Beal, Hachimura, and Morris, at least two of those guys are out, Avdia's value goes up. I also want to watch what happens with Fart and Will Barton. No, you, Will! No, he's ready to sack that. Will! Give it off quick! Um... He had a good game last time, and if those guys do remain out, then there is some value there in, in Barton. Otherwise, not really. For the Heat, I want to see whether Tyler Hero plays. Another one of these troubling situations where he was out, he came back, and he's back on the injury report. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. Yeah, yeah. And if he's out, and Struess is out, and Vincent's out, and Robinson's out, then they're in strife again. It's going to be a lot of Jamal Cain. It's going to be tons of Kyle Lowry and tons of Caleb Martin who has played 43, 40, 35, 40, 40 minutes the last three games. Like, just gigantic numbers. And he, with everyone out, he is a 12-team league player. When everyone comes back, he isn't. But with everyone out, he is. So we want to watch to see what the hell happens with all of these injuries. Atlanta and Houston is the next game. Bogdanovich remains out for Atlanta. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate, is also out. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. Um... So let's see what AJ Griffin can do because he played big minutes last game, even with DeAndre Hunter back. He's at least looking like a 14-team short-term stream. And then the Baptist, Johnny Collins, who we know he's been annoying. I know it's been frustrating, but he's sort of, I think I had him in the 70s preseason. He's sort of in that area anyway after that red-hot start. It's frustrating for sure. And I don't think we should expect more, but it's also not the end of the world. For the Rockets, there is a chance Bruno Fernando returns, and I'm ready. There's a chance that I lose my mind. Because if they start Fernando and limit Shengun, I'm going to be annoyed. Like, what's the point? There's honestly no point to it. But let's watch Shengun, who has fallen away a little bit. Let's be fair. He's dropped off a little bit in his production. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. But how does he work in there with Fernando and with Garuba, and how does that production all look? Also, I want to watch um, Jabari Smith Jr., I just got delivered some breakfast. I put it on put it on the big screen. Look at that. Look at this. Wow. Breakfast delivery. Thank you, assistant. Yeah. Did I put on the I didn't even, I didn't even put it on the big screen. Let's put it on the big screen again. There you go. Or did I? Now I've lost my mind. There you go. Breakfast delivery. Um and I need to go back to what I was doing because so I've, I've uh, lost my train of thought. Anyway, yeah, Jabari Smith is what we're talking about here because he has started to improve. Whether that continues, I don't know. Um, but the shot is going in a little bit more. We're getting a little bit more defensive stats, a little bit more rebounds. I do think he's going to end up top 100 this season. And I, I believe sticking with him is the right course of action. But the Rockets can screw things up really at any point. The Bulls and the Thunder 
is the next game that we're going to take a look at. Chicago, one-point favorites. The total, 233 and a half. Goran Dragic is listed doubtful with that shoulder injury, while Lonzo Ball is out. Mike Mascal is out for the Thunder. Um, I want to watch Kobe White because he really won them the game against the Bucks. And with Dragic out, can White play 20 minutes again? Is he better than Desumu? He played better than him last game. How they run the Desumu White minutes will be something that we really need to watch. I don't think we need to add Kobe White at all, but we want to watch what happens. I do think Desumu is a drop though. But DeRozan or DeMar DeRozan, like he's just been great. The minutes have been through the roof, 44, 35, 38 the last three games. He's carrying this team. His efficiency from two is actually up from last season somehow. He's hitting threes at like 33%, and the volume's are not, it's not great, but he's better at it. He's been great. Let's see if he continues it. For the Thunder, I want to watch the Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. Now, he hasn't put it all together yet in your one game where he has his great assists with good scoring and efficiency, but we're seeing little bits and pieces. And what we are seeing more importantly is like 26 minutes a night every night, at least. I don't know whether he starts. I don't know whether he comes off the bench, but... It's trending in the right direction. And he's worth a stash slash a guy that you can have who gives you back-end value with a little bit more upside on it. I also want to watch Josh Giddy, who has struggled at times, but also had some big games. But they're not afraid to bench him when the struggles are there. And that's what happened in the last one. But they went back to him in overtime. The numbers are okay. Let's see how he bounces back and how he responds to that situation. Pistons Suns. Phoenix are 11.5 point favorites here. Cunningham is out. There's a report on The Athletic today suggesting that best case scenario is 10 weeks for Cunningham and that they're trying to persuade him to have surgery to fix it. Um, Yeah, I, I, I think if you dropped him, it's probably not going to hurt you. I personally wouldn't do it just yet, but I don't think it's going to hurt. I just don't think he's going to play again. Isaiah Stewart's still out, but his return should come soon. Sadiq Bay similarly. While well, Chris Paul, Landry Shamet, and Cam Johnson all remain out for old mates, the um, uh, Phoenix Suns. Qu- uh, Killian Hayes is questionable. Jaden Ivey is also questionable. Um, Hamadou Diallo is questionable as well in Detroit. I want to watch Marvin Bagley, who did turn in a good game last game. He only played 21 minutes, but that's what I'm all looking at. Now, he's not going to be a 90% shooter every game, and he's hitting free throws better this season. We'll see whether that's real. But the thing is that Jalen Duran's getting more minutes than him every game, and that's what I want to see. A Duran, to me, is a 12-team stashable guy. Bagley, I'm not interested in. But I also want to watch with Bay out Kevin Knox, who's had two massively good games in a row. Now, the shooting has no chance of sticking at that level, but... Is he at least streamable? He's outplaying Isaiah Livers very clearly. I think probably a little more looking at 16 teams for for Knox because last game he was great, but he hit 75% of his shots and I don't think he had a single assist, steal or block, which hurts his overall production. For the Suns, I do think Torrey Craig is a 12-team league guy at this point. It's going to be up or down um, without any doubt, but... He's producing either scoring some nights, rebound some nights, defensive stats some nights. And then let's watch DeAndre Ayton. Can we get something going, mate? Like, keep your free throws up, get some blocks. He's playing better. He is playing better, but it's still not at the level um, that we need him to be at. If Killian Hayes is out, Corey Joseph will probably start, and I do not want to add Corey Joseph. The Jazz and the Warriors is the next game, the second last game of the day. Warriors are six and a half point favorites. Conley and Gay will be out. That's the only other injuries we have here. So let's watch Colin Sexton, who will start, but will he be good or will he be average? He's worth holding for now. I don't think long-term he's going to be a guy that's a 12-team must roster. And even now, I think he's still back end, but last game was encouraging. And then I also want to watch Walker Kessler, who just blocks a ton of shots. We know this. But there, he is starting to look better on court. He's always looked pretty good. But the minutes are pushing up, and it is hurting Jared Vanderbilt Bar. So let's see how that Kessler-Vanderbilt minute split looks. For the Warriors, man, just can Jordan Poole do anything? Just one game where you're solid off the bench. Hasn't really happened at all. And also, Clay Thompson, the other side, the last three to four have been really good for him. Is he going to be able to continue to shoot at this level and produce? We know what he is. He's a scoring guy that needs the shots to go in because not much else happens. But let's see whether he's actually got himself back on track fully. Last game of the day is the Nuggets and the Clippers. The Nuggets are two-point favorites here. I'm expecting Jamal Murray and Maga Porter Jr. to play. Bones Highland, I don't know about. He's questionable with that illness. Jeff Green is out. While for the Clippers, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Luke Kennard aren't officially out at this point. I'm expecting them to be out. So I've listed them out, but they're not officially out. I don't think they will play. On the Nuggets, as long as someone is out, Bruce Brown is someone we want to stream in. But if Bones Highland does play and everyone else is healthy, where is Brown's role? 
is it 23 minutes? Because before, when everyone was healthy, Brown was flying, and then there was a stage where Highland started playing 26, 27, and Brown played 22. And 22 for Bruce Brown's not a 12-team league guy. I think we want to hold him, but let's see where he fits. Also, Aaron Gordon went off last game. I don't really think that's something that's real for him as we move forward, but it was really impressive. I also want to see what they do back up center, because John Ray Jordan out of the rotation, and they were lo- yeah, using Zeke Naji, Vlako Chanchar, and what did I say that way? Chanchar, and um, Jack White in that role. So do they continue to do that? For the Clippers, I think Amir Coffey will get another start. He's worth looking at, as is Norman Powell, as is Terrence Mann, as is Reggie Jackson. But they're all so fluky and flaky that it's hard to recommend one over the other as a must roster. I think Powell is the one that you'd probably prioritize, then Jackson, maybe Coffey and Mann after that, but they're going to have fleeting value until you know one of these guys is back or when two of them come back, they're really cooked. But short-term value is there. The problem is it's a 14-game day and you probably can't stream it in. And guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget to enjoy your Thanksgiving. But also follow me on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, yeah follow this podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey and on YouTube. Thumb it up. Leave your comments. Guys, we're done. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to go eat my toast. See ya.